I just want to take some of the information that we learned today and apply it to a patch. So here's something that I just created, and we'll go back through it and kind of break it down. But here's how it sounds when I play chords. Okay, let's break this down a little bit. So starting with source A, in source A I have a very simple sine wave, and I'm using an arpeggiator on it. So to assign the arpeggiator, all I have to do is come down to the arpeggiator section, choose A, and I chose as played, so the order in which I play the keys when I play a chord is how it's going to arpeggiate. I have the octaves going up four octaves, so it goes four octaves up and down. Uh, I have a fairly long length, that's the gate of the note. And uh, yeah, and that's about it. It's going in uh, eighth note triplets. Now I do have on the volume, I'm using a different AHDSR envelope so that it has a little bit more of a percussive sound to it. I'm also applying pan using LFO3. It's just a very simple sine wave. It's not bipolar. And then on the tuning, I have an ultra high frequency LFO that's just doing ever so slightly detuning it as it's moving around. This position value isn't really needed, but it's a leftover from when I was programming the uh, synth. And honestly, it's not messing anything up, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Now, down below, none of the filters are being used, the additive section's not being used, the VA section's not being used. It's very, very simple. In the effects, I do have a delay and a reverb. So I just kind of love how they add together over time. It ends up just getting richer and richer as you play. So that's the basics on source A. Now if we go to source B, I'm using a sawtooth pad where I've got a very large number of unison going on. So it's copying the sound 11 times and then I'm detuning it. I'm also applying sync using an LFO. So LFO2 is assigned to a slow rate, sync to tempo, and it's triggered every time I hit. So when I play, I like the kind of bloom that it has at the beginning of the sound. And when I hold it down, you can hear that it repeats. And I really like that tonality and I like the sort of richness of it. There are no effects on it. I'm not really routing it out to anything, but it doesn't need it because this is basically sort of the main pad sound that's going on. After that, I incorporated a sample and used additive processing on it. It's a single female vocal sample. And I'm messing around with quite a bit using position. So I'm just taking the very center bit of what she's singing and I'm moving around within that O. And it gives me an almost bizarre organish tone that I really like a lot. Now the LFO is not a standard LFO. If I come down here to LFO 4, you can see that it's got a little bit of a bump in the middle. So I'm keeping it kind of imperfect and I like the kind of glitchiness that it has. And that's basically what's going on with source C. Now if I go to source D, source D I have a vintage saw, but I'm doing quite a bit of modulation here in the filter section of that source. I have them set up parallel, which I haven't done yet. In filter one, I have a low pass filter that has a fairly high resonance and it's being modified by an MSEG, so multi segment envelope. And oh, I actually turned that off. I didn't like it. Uh, that's right. I went back to the LFO. So LFO five looks familiar if you used it before in this course. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's a basic sine wave with a little bit of wobble in it. And I applied the same thing to the formant 
filter as well, which is going in parallel. So I'm getting formant as well as a low pass. Notice I don't have it set up to trigger, so basically wherever I catch it is where I catch it. And then the culmination of all these together, I think, makes a nice rich sound. So there you go, that's kind of a massive pad with a moving sine wave. Now I'll try out a little something different and let's analyze a little bit of a different sound. 